All right, hey guys, OFD checking in here. And today I just wanted to do a little side-by-side -side comparison of a couple of bronze watches that are really great watches for the price point. And both of these watches come in at similar price points. If you find discount codes on them, sometimes you can get one a little bit cheaper than the other, or actually quite a bit cheaper than the other. But I have seen uh, discount codes out there for Steinhardt watches, and there are discounts available for Phoebus watches. Actually, if you use OFD uh, discount code at checkout, you get 10% off any purchase from Phoebus watches. But I really love both of these watches. I love what they have to offer. So I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Now, the first thing I want to mention about both of these watches, and you, you're going to see it right off the top, is these are different grades of bronze. This is using the CSNU8, which is a marine grade bronze. And you can see this watch is already starting to develop a patina. This is the Phoebus. And uh, it looks really nice, kind of a darker, darker look to it. Now, they don't specify the grade of bronze uh, at the Steinhardt website that they're using, but from what I've been told by the metal experts that watch this channel, um, this is probably running a higher grade of alloy or aluminum in it, so it's getting this more yellow look to it. It's also limiting the patina or, or slowing the patina on the watch quite a bit, which if you don't like the darker patina on the watches, you may want to look at something with a higher you know, aluminum content in it if that is the case because it will patina uh, much, much slower. So another thing I want to mention about these two watches is both of them are running high-grade Swiss movements. You've got the Solita SW200 over here in the Phoebus uh, Eagle Ray, which is a great, great movement. 26 joules, beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and has approximately a 40-hour power reserve. In the Steinhardt, you are running the ETA 2824, which is a movement that's kind of getting more scarce out there, especially in the um, the market outside of uh, the Swatch Group, um, they've kind of rounded up all those movements and they're not really selling them them out there to micro brands anymore. So if you are buying a more modern Steinhardt, you might be looking at a Salita movement, which really isn't a bad thing at all. Uh, the 2824 is an excellent movement. I do believe it's a 25 joule movement. Again, beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour and has right around that 40 hour power reserve. One thing I will note is the Phoebus has maintained the date functionality down here at the six o'clock position, which the Solita SW200 does have date functionality. The 2824 also has it, but this is a no date version. Um, so there's no date window cut out. One thing I will note is there is a ghost position here on the crown of, uh, on the crown stem, meaning there's actually date functionality on the watch. It's just not on the dial. It's, it's underneath there. So there's probably a date wheel that spins around under there. Um, possibly not, but there is a ghost position on that stem, meaning basically, you pop it out to wind it, you pop it out one more position, that's where you would set the date, and then you pull it out to stop it and hack the movement. So a little disappointing. I mean, I do wish it was a, you know, I wish they'd just fix that stem, but that's a lot of work to do to a movement, especially in a micro brand company like this. They're not going to pull all these stems out and do that kind of work because it's a lot of extra labor. So, so we've got great movements in both of the watches. Now, specs wise, very similar. Um, this is a 500 meter uh, rated uh, diver's watch. And I'm, when I'm saying specs, I'm talking the movements, the glass and stuff like that. I'll talk about the size here in just a minute, but um, you've got uh, you know a 500 meter diver's watch. Now I know they're not ISO rated either of these, and I don't believe that Phoebus is actually pressure testing their watches to 500 meters. I could be wrong uh, in that case, but I, I just don't think so. You know, uh, 200 meters on the Ocean One GMT, 300 meters of difference in the watches. Does that matter to me? Not one bit, guys, and I don't think it should matter to you if you choose to purchase these as a dive watch or whatever else. I, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. So um, sapphire glass being used on both of these. The, the Steinhardt, you can see, has a nice heavy chamfer to it. Uh, both of the watches are using an AR coating underneath. Uh, the Phoebus, as you can see, is a little bit closer to the bezel surface, so maybe less sticking out. But really, both great, great looking sapphire crystals. I always like the chamfer. I think it adds quite a bit of character to the watch. Now, let's talk about the size of these two watches. And th this is where they really start to stray apart. And you can probably see it right here in video. So the Phoebus is a 40.5 um, a millimeter case from side to side. Comes in under 47 from lug tip to lug tip. And you've got a 20 millimeter lug opening. I do believe it's right around 14 millimeters of thickness on the watch to the top of that sapphire crystal. On the uh, Steinhardt here, you've got a 42 millimeter case from side to side. Comes in over 50 lug tip to lug tip. Again, comes in right around 14 millimeters of thickness and you have a 22 millimeter opening. So definitely a bigger size watch. Now, since I have this watch up here in front of you guys, I wanna show you the dial on the watch. Now it's really hard to pick up here in the room. 
of course, under my cruddy lighting. But this is a brown dial on the watch, kind of a brown dial with some lines in it. Uh, like I said, really tough to see. Sapphire crystals are unforgiving with light reflection, and I don't have a, a dark room to shoot these videos in. But the dial itself, Super Luminova, you can see the indices are all painted on, loom painted on. You have a chapter ring on the dial itself. It's not a raised chapter ring. It's got the rehout is just smooth all the way around there, as you can see. Beautiful sword style hands and that old vintage military style, guys. And you can see that sweeping second hand all the way out there to the seconds track on the watch. Down here, you got Ocean One. You've got your 1,000 feet. Oh, there's a 300 meter watch. My bad. I said 200. It's 300 meters, so it's only 200 meters of difference. Again, no big deal. And automatic because you're running that ETA 2824 in there. So nice looking watch, but I do want to bring up the Phoebus here because I think at the price point, this is where the Phoebus really starts to do some pretty impressive things. Now, bringing it up here close so we can look at the dial on the watch, this is a glossy black dial. So again, it's not going to help any with reflections on it, but it is a very beautiful polished glossy black dial. You have these stick style hands on here with the uh, syringe tips on them, which make it very easy to read. And I want to note to you these amazingly applied indices on the watch. Very, very nicely done in it. I believe a step up from the Steinhardt uh, quite a bit, actually, to be honest with you. So very, very good looking clean dial. You've got the Phoebus Octopus up there at the 12 o'clock and then it lets you know it's a 500 meter automatic down here. Just uh, just above the date window there at 6 o'clock. So, all right, guys, I'm going to pause it for a second. Get these watches on my 7-inch wrist and then stick around at the end. We'll go out that loom shot. So we're going to start out with the smaller of the two watches for the wrist shot here. You can see uh, this Phoebus fits my watch, I mean my wrist, my 7-inch wrist extremely, extremely well. Um, the Eagle Ray line is just a, one of my favorite, to be honest, lines of the Phoebus watches out there. And I'll leave links down below in the description where you can check them out. I'm not sure how many of these they honestly have left. They sell out of all their bronze models they get in, but it's a really good watch. I didn't show you guys the bezel, so I'll go ahead and turn that real quick. You've got um, these nice 120-click uh, bezel on this. Everything locks in very, very good. And it's a very nicely done watch. Like I said, stick around for the loom because the loom in this one is really, really incredible. You know, one of the things I didn't mention when I was showing the two watches side by side, and I think you guys will kind of see it, is just the, uh, you know, what I believe is originality and design here on the Phoebus. Uh, I love this watch. I think it's beautifully done, but I do think it's pulling some... Um, some stuff from historic watches, obviously it's the Rolex mill sub and whatnot, some of the looks on it, but it is a standalone watch, especially in the colorway, the bronze and everything like that. But um, I do love, love the looks of the Phoebus Eagle Ray, that sawtooth bezel on there. Just very, very unique watch, but uh, do love this one. Let's go ahead and get the Steinhardt on my seven inch wrist. All right, so here's the Steiny Bronzo on my seven inch wrist. Again, it's a, it's a great, <laughs> I really love the way this watch looks. I love the colorway on the watch. It's the only brown watch I have in the collection. I think it's super, super cool. I have always been a big fan of Steinhardt watches and what they do. Very high quality uh, watches being made there. Now, since I put the the uh, Phoebus and, on my wrist and the Steinhardt together, let's go ahead and show them like that. You know, it doesn't look like much of a difference. Of course, this one's sitting on my hand, not my wrist, but maybe over here would be a little bit better to compare the two. But you guys can see the two sitting there together. Now, I'm going to really quickly uh, take it off my wrist and I want to show you guys a quick comparison uh, of the straps that come with the watch before we go to the loom shot. And I'm going to put on the watch I've been wearing this uh, today, and that's the, the Islander... Um, ISLO 2, I do believe. It's one of their original watches. Love that watch. But I want to talk really quick about the straps here uh, on the watch. Now, this is high-grade leather from Phoebus. I've been wearing on the leather strap quite a bit. I like the way it feels on there. Uh, it's a thick leather. It's pretty stiff, so you got to break it in. And once you do, it'll you know mold to your arm shape and whatnot. It does have the Phoebus uh, crack in there on the back, as you guys can see it. And you have that CSNU8 bronze hardware also being used on the buckle assembly. So really nice sturdy leather strap. On the uh, Steinhardt, they're using a calf leather strap and it's super, super supple, super, super soft. Uh, you know, occasionally I feel like it's maybe a little too soft for a diver's watch, but it's a leather strap on a diver's watch, right guys? So who cares? But uh, I didn't show you the case back on the Steinhardt either. If you guys are fans of the Ocean One, you know this is a standard uh, case back, letting you know on this one that it's a bronze model. But you have the Steinhardt logo here uh, in the 22 millimeters. And this is interesting because it does look like they're using a different grade of bronze, uh, more like the Phoebus, the CSNU8 on the uh, buckle assembly on uh, <coughs> the Steinhardt compared to what they're using on the case. So, all right, guys, I think I've shown you everything. We'll spin the bezel on the Steinhardt so you can get a hear of that 120 click bezel because we did it on the Phoebus, right? 
And it's a, a very nice bezel. Everything lines up greatly on these watches. Steinhardt, I've never had a problem with that. So, all right, let's kill the lights and check out the loom on these two watches. Well, bit of an indicator there, guys. I haven't even loomed them up or shined them up with the flashlight. My studio lights that are sitting over them was enough to get these watches glowing. But let's go ahead and charge them up a little bit more. Now, I know that Phoebus is using, I think, 20-plus layers of Super Luminova on their watches. Steinhardt is using a very high grade. But you will notice a bit of a difference, I think, in the glow of the watches. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, both of them are very, very well done in the loom field. Obviously, those bigger hands on the Steinhardt give it a big, big, bright glow. Um, the applied indices, I think, on the Phoebus give those indices a little bit more glow than the smaller painted-on indices. And it will last longer on this watch. Look at the size of that loom pip. So... All right, guys, the comparison of the Phoebus Eagle Ray Bronze and the Steinhardt Brown Bronze, uh, the Ocean One Bronze. Kind of a fun video, just thought I'd share with you guys and uh, love these two watches. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom. And if you've not subscribed to the OFD channel yet, please do, please do. Thanks, guys.